Welcome back. Uh, we're joined over the phone by Dr. Mayel Botron, uh, an economic expert. Good afternoon to you, doctor. Hi, good, good afternoon to you. Thank you for joining us. Um, can you sort of give us a bit of a brief about the importance of uh, land reclamation when it comes to the Tushka project uh, in terms of uh, its economic significance uh, when it comes to agriculture? Uh, the Tushka project has uh, a very particular significance. Yes. First of all, it's the first significance is the resilience of the uh, government of today to yes. solve all problems related to agricultural development of a project such yes. as the Tushka one, which has actually started in 1997, but in 2017, so a real uh, a shift of all uh, issues related to the project and it's yes. real going forward again. So number one is resilience. Number two is agricultural security re related to the picture, the very uh, interesting uh, picture that yes. we saw His Excellency the President today with the wheat behind him at, at that particular time where wheat is not only a strategic, mm. but a political and uh, yes. an extremely political weapon in, in our particular time of uh, 2022. Yes. So this is giving a, 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 a message of, of strength and of security for the Egyptian people yes. and for the business community and particularly that in the agricultural business community. Yeah, so the Toshka project also, I would like yes. uh, to add, is not only uh, related to um, um, strategic um, um, products such as mm. wheat, but it also has very important products to uh, the uh, Egyptian and Islamic world, such as the palm trees and the dates, mm. and also several other agricultural products that are important for export, yes. such as the fruits and the vegetables. And then all of the, the, the produce and agricultural land is surrounded by um, communities and job opportunities and also is surrounded by the uh, animal yes. produce yes. around the um, products of agricultural, regular products of agriculture. Yes, um, I wanted to ask you about the idea of self-sufficiency of wheat. Uh, that's the aim that the government is working towards, to have self-sufficiency when it comes to wheat. How important is this for us as Egyptians? And uh, is there also potential to somehow be also wheat exporters in the future? I'm always an optimistic person, but anything can happen if we put our heads to it. But it's very important to know of course, yes. with your expertise, you know that Egypt is the largest, largest wheat importer in the yes. world. Yes. Because we, we like, we use wheat a lot as Egyptian people. Yes. So to reach the point of self-sufficiency is an extremely important goal, particularly in a world of political strife that we are yes. living in today. So this is number one. Number two, and we've seen this today as well, is the inauguration of several silos. The silo, the silo projects are extremely yes. important. They're strategic because they are keeping the wheat yes. for today and for, and they are it's, um, uh, healthy and uh, also that, uh, that yes. um, with less um, loss. You know that before the silo program that the, the current government is supervising, we used to lose nearly 20% of mm -hmm. our wheat uh, in Egypt. Yes, that's so the now we are saving on 20% plus. We are increasing the time of keeping the wheat. And at the same time, we are increasing the land yes. being cultivated. And Egypt also is enhancing research in the wheat agricultural sector to enhance the mm -hmm. return on the wheat fed land. So we are actually now having one of the largest in the world returns per Fadan. Yes. Um, are there also further projects in the near future 
to uh, use Toshka's land reclamation areas uh, um, to potentially grow other, live, uh, or other agricultural products and also be used for livestock. Exactly, which is extremely important. Now we are, uh, uh, the current government is uh, planting two and a half million uh, policies uh, as well as uh, 600 fed dams of, yes. uh, um, of agricultural land. Yes. We also, they have also uh, started off with programs in not only the, mm -hmm. uh, the regular animals of the farm animals, but yes. also of fish products around the water um, and food uh, products from the Toshka project as well. Mm. Yeah, um, how do you see uh, the uh, Tushka project itself when it comes to using technology and trying to, you know, be more environmentally friendly? Um, is the, are these techniques being applied and does it help also in providing job opportunities for the young people? The Tushka project uh, is about uh, four and a half million satans. Mm. It's, part, it's part of the um, um, uh, government plan to mm -hmm. cultivate four and a half million per dam. Yes. It actually uh, uh, started off with 350,000 uh, per dam, mm -hmm. going up to 600,000 per dam. Yes. And uh, the main component in this growth is uh, creating job opportunities, but not only daily jobs or monthly jobs where yes. uh, uh, agricultural workers are moved to and from Toshka, but also uh, uh, creating uh, sustainable communities of young people over there mm -hmm. with the schools re re um, requested and, um, and having a full-fledged community. Yes. And the infrastructure that the government as well has worked on, all the roads from coming to yes. and from Toshka to as one area and to other governorates mm -hmm. of Egypt have also played a role to, uh, as a good seeding uh, um, um, phase for the new communities being yes. formed as a growth potential and accessibility, not only for the movement of people, but also uh, for the movement mm -hmm. of the agricultural products and uh, eventually um, uh, industrial and agricultural uh, products from Toshka, yes. inshallah. Uh, Dr. Mayel Batran, an economic expert, thank you so much for joining us over the phone and giving us your insight on the importance of Toshka Reclamation Project. Uh, we're going to take a short break and get back to the rest of the episode.